afternoon. It's a hot afternoon again. I've, I've just I've been sitting in board meeting all day down in Albuquerque, and uh, on my way home, I looked at the temperature in the car. It said 103. So it's been another scorcher, and uh, you know we're just going to keep pushing on. I, I kind of hate leaving air conditioning office come to a swamp cooler, but uh, we're going to survive. Amen. Maybe lose a few ways. Hey, people paid money to go sit in a uh, sauna, right? Anyway, let's get into our word with Pastor Ralph. Today's word, we're going to kind of finish up with the armor, full armor of God. Uh, this isn't actually listed in Ephesians chapter 6, but in uh, Isaiah 59, it talked about uh, uh, the Lord putting on, and at the end of it, it said that he had uh, the cloak of zeal. And I want us to understand this word zeal just a little bit better. Um, I believe that is something that a lot of Christians um lack is their zeal for God, their zeal for the ministry, their zeal for the word of God. Uh, but I'm I'm just um uh, I can you know when I was in the military, uh, one of the things that's on a good conduct medal uh, it says with zeal. And I believe that our walk with the Lord, even as a Christian soldier, uh, or just a just a, a disciple maker. And um, the series we just finished preaching for God and country, that's what I tried to get us to see is that God's not taken by surprise. We see the change that's going on. Uh, we're special as believers. We're chosen. Uh, and, and God has a tremendous uh, interest in everything that we do. And we're here for his purpose. And and all these things come together to get us to where we need to be about doing his work. And that's what we talked about uh, yesterday. But this word zeal, many, uh, many have zeal uh, for God, but sometimes it's, um, you know, is it, what is it the way he wants it, the way God wants it? The zeal that we have, is it something uh, that we try to do uh, to impress somebody or just be in the front. But the zeal sometimes, even if it's of, of God or for God, it might be for the wrong reasons. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 3 says this. It says, Brothers, my heart's desire and pray to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. And that knowledge is of what God wants. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. See, we can get caught up in well-doing. and We can get caught up in a lot of things in the world, uh, and they can go under the banner of good works. They can go under the banner of, of uh, helping others. But is it the zeal that God desires? Is it his righteousness, his right living, that righteousness in which we receive from him? Uh, sometimes religion can fog our eyes or how we see what God desires. Uh, I've known a lot of Christians that were very zealous about attendance, uh, very zealous about doing certain things and mannerisms, mannerisms, excuse me. But there's things that God expects. In Philippians 3, we see Paul himself talking about this, this zeal that he had although it wasn't for Jesus. It was for the church or the organization, the religion. In chapter six, it says concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. So he followed the law to the T, but yet he was not doing God's will. So there should be a zeal of uh, for repentance. We need to be cleaning up. So let's touch on some of these things. The zeal that of this repentance we find in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, from verse 10, it says, For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. We talked about this in one of our words a couple weeks ago, right? Whereas worldly grief produces death, but for see, what earnestly is godly grief has produced in you, what also, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment. For every point you have proved yourself innocent in the matter. You see, that word we talked about was conviction. 
And if we get to a place that we have conviction over the wrong in our lives, we want to make it right. We can clean up. We can have a zeal about that in a way that we're not doing it because, well, we want to not be seen as a sinner or maybe that we've done something wrong, but that in the eyes of God, amen, we need to get to a place that we want to clean our lives up, that we're not embarrassed to stand before Jesus. There also needs to be a zeal uh, of our love for one another. First uh, Peter chapter 1, verse 22, start, starting there, it says, Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. Hallelujah. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of God, uh, of the Lord, remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. You see, if we love one another, we're going to take care of one another, especially not necessarily in the, the condition of our clothes or our food or whatever, but in the word of God. We're going to have a zeal to share the word and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we talk about the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith, uh, the belt of truth, all these things. As we go to help those that are weak and can't help themselves, we need to share them with a zeal. Um, and we're going to get more into that definition here in a little bit, but we need to love one another as Christ first loved us. And then we should show a zeal for good works. And I know a lot of Christians that this is important, and it is important, because why do we have the gifts that we have if we're not using it for good works? Titus 2.14 says, Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people of his own possession who are zealous for good works. See, the reason why the Lord has blessed us in a way he has as we talked about in our series, uh, the morning of the fourth, we God looked down the annals of time and he foreknew who was going to say, yes, I will. Remember we talked about that? And he knows that we are wanting to follow him and we'll say yes to John 3, 16. But he, after we're saved, it's not a matter of just going to heaven, but we need to be zealous about the good works. Why did he leave us here? We've talked about that extensively. Why did he leave us here? Well, whatever it is, our purpose is, Romans 8, 28, right? Whatever that purpose is, we need to be zealous about it. That means to a point that nothing gets in the way of that. And we hold God's banner high. Um, and, there, and we should also have a zeal for God's gifts. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God gave us spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. I love the power part. We've talked about, I've, I did a series on, on strength and courage, that power that we get from God and him indwelling us, the love that we can only have through God because God is love, right? But that last one there, we sometimes kind of leave off and that's self-control. Um, and that's not controlling your temper, which it could be. But for the most part, I think it's self-control is that we know what the scripture says. We know what God's word says, and we need to keep his commandments. Amen. If we're going to do that. Then we'll be zealous about the gifts that God has given us. And then understand why. Why do we need to be zealous towards the Lord? Romans 5, 8 shows the opposite. It says, but God shows his love for us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That should make us zealous towards God. I understand how. How is this to, to, how can we fulfill this? And this is what I was talking about. In John 14, 15, it says, I, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That is a form of uh, being as, as the zeal that we need to have to understand what it is that God has been, tell, been telling us. And here's what it all boils down to. And we talk about zeal or zealous. Um, I hear Andy, he'll say, uh, when I was a young Christian, I was just a zealot. Uh, it means that we just, we don't care about nothing else. 
We just love God. And we want to do the things that he has called us to do. In Revelations chapter 3, verse 19, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. That zealous that, that, that Jesus is talking about there, are you jealous for God? I sometimes think we let things of this world get in front of God. Um, the word jealousy uh, uh, comes from a Latin word that we get the word zeal from as well. Are we jealous for God? Do we get jealous over him? Um, I think we could do a little better job on that sometimes. I get angry sometimes of how people talk about God or how people live, but I mean, I, somebody said something on the radio, and I don't even know who the, the person was, but they said something, and, and I believe it's something that I, I need to work on as well. Am I caught up in life so much that I have lost sight of who God is, where God is? I preach it, but I mean, the longing that we have to see Jesus, that needs to be something of a zeal matter. I want to see Jesus above everything else. I want to see Jesus um, and love Jesus before anything else. I want to be that one that is zealous. I want to repent of my, my wrongdoing, but I want to be zealous about my Lord and Savior. Amen. Our verse for today is Romans 12, verse, uh, Romans 12, verse 11. The whole chapter of, uh, chapter 12 of the book of Romans is just tremendous on how to live and be a good Christian, okay? A child of God. But this verse says, do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit and serve the Lord. Don't be slothful in your jealousy, if you will, of the Lord. Be fervent in the, that spirit that he's given us. Use it. And for what reasons? That is to serve the Lord. So my attitude adjustment for today is my zeal will be defined by my love for God. Amen. I hope you can say that. I hope you can look to God and say, I love you so much that I'm not going to let things interfere with keeping your commandments. I'm not going to let things interfere with me loving somebody that's very unlovable. I'm not going to let this this life that I live, get in front of my duties and my uh, good works that you've called me to do. I love you that much, Lord. And that's where we need to be in our lives, okay? I appreciate y'all sitting here listening to me for a little bit. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you so much that uh, you've given us this armor and you've given us everything that we need uh, to stand in this battle that we find ourselves called life. And Lord, it's a lot more than just the physical day to day. And I pray that we would give note to the, the battles that we have against the devil. And uh, Lord, these changing times that we find ourselves, I pray that we would be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Lord, I pray that we would move forward with uh, zeal uh, to lift our heads up and be proud to be your children, and be proud to be uh, an ambassador of heaven. And Lord, I just pray that you give us a new direction that we can hold true, and and not so much a new direction, but a a zealous direction that that it's we don't look so much at what's going on on the left or right. Lord, you've guided our footsteps. You've promised us that. And I pray that you would just. Help us to stand true, uh, not wavering one bit. And I thank you for what you're going to do. Let us feel your conviction, your challenge. Let us be busy about your work. And I ask you all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Y'all have a blessed evening. I'll see you here tomorrow. Take care.